QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Two businesses and personal bookkeeping in one QuickBooks file using classes or QuickBooks class tracking overview. Get ready. It's time to boldly account where no accountant has accounted before with QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Here we are on the desktop. We have our QuickBooks Enterprise program. This is the free 30-day trial version of the program that you can download and test out the functionality of QuickBooks Enterprise with. We're going to be opening up this program. We're going to set up a new company file within it. We're going to locate that company file in our folder to the right, and then we'll turn on the class tracking features. The goal of this practice problem is to think about a situation where we might have two different companies or possibly two different locations, but even two different separate companies entirely, and even be tracking our personal information in the QuickBooks program in one QuickBooks file. Now, if you have QuickBooks Pro, you can do this to some degree with the, uh, with the functionality of the classes, but you're limited to the class functionality on the income statement and you don't have it for the balance sheet. That might be good enough if you have small businesses and you're dealing with a Schedule C type of reporting, you're mainly doing it for Schedule C type of reporting on the taxes, which is basically just an income statement side of things. However, if you also want to track the balance sheet side of things for separate entities, separate locations, separate businesses, or business and personal, then you can use Enterprise, which also has that functionality to use the classes on the balance sheet side of things. So as we go through this practice problem, we'll mention some of the differences between Pro and Enterprise and when, when there have differences in the functionality and the difference of what you can do with just an income statement class tracking and what kind of advantages you might have with a balance sheet side of things on the class tracking for this type of situation. Let's open up our QuickBooks Enterprise. The first screen that we will go into will look a little bit different than if you had the program because this, this would be the sample version. But once we go in from there, it'll look the same as basically uh, QuickBooks Enterprise or QuickBooks Desktop Program at that point. So here's the intro screen for the sample file. What we want to do is start a, uh, a new company file. So I'm ready to create my own company file and setting up a new one that we're then going to save on the desktop. Once we save it on the desktop, we'll basically be in the same situation as we would if, if using the normal version of the software. I'm going to set it up for somebody else rather than myself because I don't want it to pull in my information that is provided by Intuit. I'd like to just put in practice data into the system. So I'm going to say go ahead and start the company file. I'm going to name it two businesses and personal just to give it a generic name for our company file. The industry that we're going to be working in with, I'm going to choose a kind of a generic industry, but I would like to see a chart of accounts for it. So I'm going to choose the general product based business. The chart of accounts then that will be generated automatically by QuickBooks is on the right. I'm going to say OK. And then the business type, I'm going to go with an S corporation. What we're doing will basically be applicable for different business types. The S corporation will have retained earnings basically in the equity section as opposed to capital or equity accounts. Then we simply need the email address, which I will populate, then move forward. These are the only four required fields given by or represented by or emphasized by the, the asterisks here, the red asterisks. So none of the other information is necessary for our problem and not required to move forward. Therefore, I'm just going to enter the email address and then push forward. Here we are in the company file. I'm going to close this out now. I'm going to, I'm going to maximize the home page. Now we might want to locate where this is at and then move it if we so choose. I'll do that in a little bit here because it didn't, QuickBooks didn't, often doesn't ask us where the file is going to be placed. Uh, so we'll do that in a bit, but first let's do a couple setup things just to check out what we have thus far. So I'm going to go to the view dropdown. I'd like to see the open windows open on the left hand side. So view open windows. I get to see the open windows on the left hand side. Let's turn on the class tracking now because that's where our focus will be. As we turn on the class tracking, note that it's going to change some of our data input screens such as the invoice, such as the bills, such as the, um, such as the checks. And that we'll have another drop down here, which will be for classes, which is probably why QuickBooks doesn't include the class tracking being on by default, because it will extend or make these windows look a little bit more busy because you'll have a class tracking field within them. I'm going to close this back out. Then let's go to the edit drop down. Let's go to the preferences and we want to go up to the accounting up top. I'm then going to go to the company preferences. So the company pre preferences side of things. We're in the second little box here. That's going to be the class. So use class tracking for transactions. That's what we want. That's what we'll check off in order to, 
to pick that option. <laughs> so then it says prompt to assign classes, meaning if you do a data input, invoice, bill, check, and you don't assign a class, it's going to say, hey, you didn't sign a class. Like it'll have a pop-up. That's a paraphrase of what it'll, it won't say that exactly, but that's what it says in essence. And then down here, this is something that we only have on the enterprise version, not in the pro version. It's not required, but it's nice. We will be taking a look at it in the future. That then is, do we want to set this thing up as a default, meaning do I want to set the accounts up by default to, to go to a particular class? Or do we want to set the items up, such as inventory items or service items, to go to a particular class by default? Or do we want to set up names, names including things like the vendors, the customers, and, um, and the employees, if we have employees, to be, to be having a default class by those items. So we'll take a look at the, those in more detail. We'll be dealing mainly, or we're thinking to, to go in with the accounts up top. But for now, let's uncheck it for now, and then we'll get back to that once we get into more detail on the chart of accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and that should then turn on the class tracking. If I then go into an invoice, let's say once again, now we've got this new field that says class right there, and that's where we put the classes. Now we don't have any classes right now, so all I have is like a new item or add new if I hit the drop down because we don't have any yet. So let's close this back up. Then we also see in our reports drop down, the reports drop down, company and financial, we see this P and L, profit and loss by class. And on the balance sheet side, if we're using the enterprise version, not there if using the pro version, we have the balance sheet by class as well. So we'll take a look at the pros and cons. Most people when using classes will be emphasizing the income statement side of things. And if you have a Schedule C type of business and you're doing this mainly for taxes, Schedule C businesses are on, are on a Schedule C for the 1040, a sole proprietorship, in other words, then you really basically need the income statement. It might give you what you need basically with the pro version. But if you want everything to roll forward on the balance sheet by location or by separate business or by business and personal and be separating your assets and liabilities, which you may need for corporate taxes if you're doing something like an S corporation or an LLC or a partnership, then uh, you're going to need the enterprise version if you want to try to do that in one QuickBooks file. Now, also note that if you talk to an accountant <laughs> on this, they're going to try not to, you know, basically say not to have personal and business and especially different businesses in one QuickBooks file because they would like to basically separate those as much as possible. And if they can, if, if we can basically separate the whole company, it usually makes the data input easier. Like on an accounting side, if I'm trying to fix something, then it's going to be easier for me to fix it, especially if I don't know like the vendors, particularly if you have completely separate files and separate checking accounts so that I can, I can have a better idea of what applies to one particular thing. But uh, if you have different locations of the same business, then, it, then the class tracking will work in a similar fashion as we're doing here. And if you do combine business and personal or even two similar businesses that you, that's, let's say you have like a husband and wife that are working different businesses and you're keeping track of them in a QuickBooks file, then uh, it's possible. It's actually, you know, it's possible to do that, but you will probably hear resistance from that, <laughs> from, from uh, the accountants. And we'll kind of explain a little bit why that might be as, as we go as well. Uh, but just keep that in mind. So we have the, the balance sheet item over here. Now let's go ahead and add our some classes. So we're going to say, let's add some classes. So if I go to the drop down list now, now we have the class list. We have the class list, list of classes. Nothing's here. We have a blank page at this point. Uh, let's add some classes by going to the class rise up, class rise up. And we're going to say this is going to be new. I'm just going to call it B1 for like the one business. So this is business number one. We can think of it as even separate locations. Like you might have, let's imagine you're a, a doctor's office and you have two different locations. Then you might call it, you know, office one or B1 and B2 for the two different locations that you might then re be reporting on one particular uh, schedule C type of business or one business like an S corporation or something like that. But you would like to be able to track out that information for personal use on, on separate locations. So you can see how much you're making from one location to the other. Or let's imagine a situation where you have two, two offices that are different businesses, possibly two doctors or, you know, two somewhat related fields would be easier, although not required because the chart of accounts will be more similar if the fields are, are related. But if you had two different businesses, like a, two different doctors, a husband and wife that have completely different, you know, businesses and practices in two different locations, 
then you could still sim do a similar thing, B1, B2, and you might then be able to take that information and utilize it then for preparation purposes, either on a sole proprietorship Schedule C or on something like an S corporation or LLC, whatever the needs may be. Although, of course, remember, S corporation LLC may require balance sheet information. That's why you would need the enterprise version if that were the case. Sole proprietorship may not. And therefore, you may be able to go with just the, uh, uh, just the pro version and do the income statement type of breakout. So we're going to start with that. I'm going to say, okay, so there's our first item. Let's do another one. Class rise up. The new item. This is going to be B2, B2, B1, B2 for business one and business two. That's what those stand for. I'm going to say, okay, and then let's do it one more time. Classes rise up. And we're going to say this is going to be personal, personal, personal. So I'm going to say, okay, there. So now we have our three classes. And then if I was going to go back to my, to my home page now, if I was to enter something like an invoice or a bill or something like that, when I enter an invoice, for example, the invoice typically increase in accounts receivable, the other side going to say sales, some type of revenue account on the income statement, we can see them basically in a vertical fashion, balance sheet, receivable goes up, income statement, sales go up. We can also then break them out by the classes. When we think about the classes, we're visualizing a, ver a vertical breakout, meaning breaking out columns column for the business one, column business two, column for the personal. That's where the added dimension, whole nother dimension has been added here. So I'm going to then close this back out. We'll close this back out. Let's go ahead and set up the checking account, one, one account to or take a look at the list of account, the chart of accounts provided to us by QuickBooks. So I'm going to go to the lists drop down. We're going to take a look at that chart of accounts that QuickBooks uh, gave us when we set up our generic file here. So here's going to be our chart of accounts. Let's add a checking account to it. So I'm going to hit the accounting rise up, account rise up, and then we're going to say checking account, which is going to be a bank type of account, and continue. This is going to be the checking account. Check out the checking account. And then we're going to say save it, close it. Now, when, now, I'm not going to buy any checks or set up any online services or, or you know, do the e-file or the, you know, the bank feeds, none of that. So I'm going to close that out. Then we have the, the checking account up top. Now, note, it would be best if you're tracking the balance sheet to have three different checking accounts. And this is another reason why many accountants would like you to basically break out three separate files because that kind of forces you to have three different checking accounts to some degree. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it with one checking account here just to see what it, it'll you know see how that will play out. So every all the expenses, everything that's gonna be paid out, and the money going in, it's gonna go into this one checking account, which is gonna kind of mess up the balance sheet side of things. So we'll see how that plays out as we go forward. So now I'd like to close this thing out, and I'd like to put this file right there. I want to put it right there on the desktop. So I want to find it. I want to locate where it's at. Now, if this was not the test file, the test drive, or 30-day trial version then I would normally go to the file tab up top and close out the company, then go into that intro screen, which can show me where the company file is. But because this is the intro version, one way that we can find the company file is to go to uh, open or restore a company file here. And then I want to go to open company file. When I do, it'll take me to the location where the company file typically is. So I'm going to say next. And then it's going to, it's going to take me to uh, the location where the file is saved. So here's where the company file is. Now, if I hit the drop down here, then I can locate it. I can say, okay, this is where they standardly put it, like right? under the C drive, users, public, public document, into it, QuickBooks company file. You may be happy with that, but I, I'm not. You know, I'm going to move it. So I'm going to move the company file. So I'm going to go find that, and then I'm going to cut it and paste it. And I'm going to put it on uh, on the desktop. You're not required to do that, but it's handy. It's useful. I would recommend knowing where the company file is and be aware that you can move it. Of course, you cannot move it until you close up uh, the the current company file that you're that you're going to move. You can't have the company file open when you're when you're moving it. So here we are back on the desktop where I have the QuickBooks program here. I have the company file. That's a QBW file. Looks just the same if you were using like the 30-day trial version or not. Just note that when you open the file, typically because we are using the trial version or if you are using the trial version, you'll typically have to open up the QuickBooks program here and then locate the file from that intro screen. That intro screen being kind of the one thing that will look different when using the 30-day trial because it tries to tell you, hey, you're using the 
30 day trial here. So then you then you want to open uh, open an existing company file, then locate where you just put the company file. So you got to kind of find the company file. Mine is now I just put it on the desktop. Now you just saw where I put it. So it's right there. And then it's under the data files, data files, data, data files, there it goes. And then there it is. So I'm going to open it up from there. So you basically have to do that every time. It won't just open directly to the company file because it wants to give you that intro screen. But once here, we're in the same situation as we would be 30 day trial or no 30 day trial version.